All right, now that our thumbnail has grabbed your attention, relax. Your favorite competitive game isn't dead, unless it happens to be Artifact. In that case... Why is one man spared while another taken? Death comes for us all. Look, we've all seen the troll baby edgelord posts on Reddit, or scrolled through a swath of YouTube videos dancing upon the supposed graves of certain games. And in most cases, these hot takes are either childish attempts at inciting flame wars, or melodramatic ways of drawing negative attention towards games or patches that leave something to be desired. It's the game! It sucks! But what exactly qualifies a game as dead? And what kind of impact can this unpleasant label have on these titles and the people that are actually playing them? What are you playing? Oh, it's actually the original Halo. It's got a fantastic spawn system, the shooting is really fluid, it's actually a really great- Oh, a dead game. Surprisingly, the term dead game didn't start out as a shitposting meme but as a genuine attempt at describing a game that has been abandoned by its player base. That makes so yeah. much sense. Usually when we talk about dead games, the moniker is directed at multiplayer titles, since single player experiences will never cease to exist unless a game is literally pulled from shelves and digital storefronts. Truly dead games are typically defined by the fact that they're legitimately unplayable. Either their developers have abandoned support for them or their servers have gone offline forever. So that's it. We are now going back. We're being forcefully disconnected from the server. I log back in, and as you can see, you can get to the server select screen, and everything is gray. And if we take a stroll through the cemetery of dead games, we'll find a slew of titles from all sorts of genres. From MMOs like Tabula Rasa, to FPSs like Lawbreakers, to even MOBAs like Heroes of the Storm. Well, I was never dead, all right? I was just resting me eyes. As a meme, Dead Game calls the relevance of a title into question. It's a groin shot characterization that's launched at basically any game that's fallen out of favor. And what game fits that mold better than StarCraft II? An RTS that in its prime contributed massively to the growth of esports, but has been on life support for the past few years. Bring out your dead one. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm not dead. What? So how did the king of competitive gaming take such a dramatic nosedive? Well, StarCraft II's troubles began with Heart of the Swarm, an expansion that was poorly received by its community at launch. That, in combination with other more accessible esports titles rising up and Blizzard choosing to region lock the game in 2015, spelled the end to its reign at the top. But here's the thing. There are still enough active StarCraft II players to warrant keeping the servers alive. Even at a competitive level, there are still huge tournaments every year, and the most dedicated parts of the community continue to endure. And I don't think oh. there's any solution here for Stats. He's going to commit Cyril overwhelming the air fleet of Stats. And that is it. GG. Anyway, on top of being used as clickbait or as a cheap shot meme, the dead game label is also used as a gatekeeping tactic that keeps certain games at the top of the tier list. But sometimes those games don't need help staying on top when their supposed challengers are absolute dog shit. And yes, we're talking about the culling too. I mean, the mechanics are bad. It's very clearly not done. The graphics, and I hate complaining about graphics, but it's hard not to in this case, look like PlayStation 2. The audience response to this awful Battle Royale cash grab was so negative that two days after its launch in 2018, there were 13 fucking people on its servers. I think most of you know that last week we launched The Culling 2 and that launch was not successful. Well, duh. The Culling 2 bombed so hard that it was pulled from Steam. And in May, its servers were shut down entirely officially making it a dead game. But games don't have to be complete dumpster fires to be branded dead. Sometimes they can be sabotaged, even by their own fan bases. Just look at Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. While it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, worse fighting games have been made. But fans of the franchise were so displeased with Capcom's offering that Infinite arrived to almost unanimous indifference. Nobody 
cares. Nobody cares. Games like Splitgate Arena and Battle Right experienced similar situations. Although both had interesting takes on established genres, both also suffered from buggy launches and struggled to grow their respective audiences. Their dooms were sealed once the larger gaming community and its hordes of sheeple proclaimed they were dead. Poor Barry the Sheeple. He's just a fool who can't think for himself and mindlessly follows the herd. Bizarrely, every now and then, healthy games are guided to irrelevance by their very creators. Just look at any EA sports game from the last 20 years. Or better yet, the Call of Duty franchise, which has compromised the continuity of its competitive scene because Activision insists on endlessly creating sequels. It's time to stop! Approaches like this force games to kick the bucket before they can naturally decline in popularity, robbing communities of playtime for the sake of cashing in on an improved sequel. I don't care about the children! I just care about their parents' money! However, every now and then we bear witness to a miracle, and games that seem destined to die are given a new lease on life. Look no further than Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft's MOBA-inspired FPS. To put it bluntly, in its first year, Siege made a pretty awful impression with most players. Mainly because it felt incomplete, was littered with bugs, and on top of that, it took what felt like an eternity to find a game. It's been 84 years. But by actually listening to their player base and its dedicated group of content creators, Ubisoft was able to reverse Siege's fate. I think to me that's one of the aspects that is the most critical for us is how much we are looking at um, the engaged players and the people that have uh, trusting us and being with us for such a long time. They are the ones that have gave us feedback. The, they are the ones that have sticked with us through Operation Health and when matchmaking was really crap. Really a uh, hats off to those guys because they've been through the moments when the game was really not in a good place and they are part of why now are the people jumping and there's a, a large player base. Although few games return from the brink of dead game status, at the end of the day, who gives a flying fuck what the internet thinks? What really matters most is what you think of your game, because it only truly dies when you choose to stop playing it. That's beautiful, Miles. Didn't you write this? Hey, the office is closing. Play that dead game at home. It's not dead. And I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> like a rock. <laughs> Those fucking Chevy commercials. I was strong as I could be. <laughs> like a rock. Nothing ever got to me. Ooh. Like a rock. I'm not a crock. <laughs> oh.